Good afternoon, everyone. This is the day that we're so excited because this is the virtual book launch for This Is My Winning Season. I don't look like what I've been through. And we're going to do Author's Spotlight. You know, a lot of times we just need to hear from the author, to hear their heart, to hear what they were thinking when they wrote in the book. So we sometimes just need to sit back, listen, and learn because they can share their struggles, their disappointments, their victories, and how it is their winning season they're declaring. So I just want to welcome everyone who's here now. It's so glad to see everyone. Just come on in, take a seat, and get relaxed and get comfortable because we're going to have a wonderful time on this author's spotlight. I just want to officially welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Mary Seegers, and I tell you, you're going to leave out of here after listening to these authors encouraged, uplifted, ready to explode and know that this is your winning season as well. Right before the program, I mentioned to the, uh, those that were here, you know, winning is very subjective because winning for you may be different for me. And that's okay because don't let circumstances or other people identify your winning season. You know, for me, for today, after it rained this morning and then it's, it really got hot, like 80 some degrees, I said winning for me today is having two scoops of ice cream and not having nobody try to check <laughs> my winning season. That was my winning moment. Can you feel me? <laughs> so you define what winning is to you. Don't let anyone else, because if you've gone through and now you're on the other side, that's winning. You have victory. I do have a quick, quick poll before I introduce the, um, uh, introduce the, um, my authors, can everyone see the poll? Just take about two minutes to answer that, if you can see that. The first question, is this your winning season? Yes, no, maybe, don't know. Be honest and be truthful. The second question, do you believe that trouble or struggles make you a better person? And look at question number three. I will declare this is my winning season. All right. You have to proclaim it for yourself, right? I think those are the quick questions. So I'm going to give you a few more minutes, and then we're going to see the results of the, of the uh, poll. Did everyone get a chance to answer those? Okay, I'm going to let two more people come in, and then we're going to end the poll. I just want to quickly share the results. Is this your winning season? Six out of seven people say yes, yes, yes. Declared to be so, right? Look at number two. I thought that was interesting. Do you believe that trouble, struggles, will make you a better person? And I'm quite, some said, in fact, all of them said yes. And look at number three. I will declare and decree this is my winning season and yes it is so thank you for that poll it just gives me uh, a understanding of the audience that we have here tonight because like i said earlier you decide what's what's winning for you right so with that i just want to quickly quickly introduce you to some of the authors you can have the author's spotlight to hear their heart to hear their heartbeat and i want to start out with a dear friend a phenomenal author a woman a powerhouse all by herself uh, Sunny Day, Pastor Sunny Day. Let me tell you a little bit about this phenomenal woman. Sunny Day is an international singer, songwriter, and speaker. She is a number one bestseller author, born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Her musical gifts have garnered her seven music awards. That's a hand clap right there. You know what I'm saying? That's awesome. Sunny is a platform artist and speaker for the largest prison ministry organization in the country. And she has been inside over 80 prisons and juvenile centers in eight, juvenile centers in eight states multiple times. You know, because when you go into those prison walls and you hear that thing slam down, you're in there then, you know. So just imagine going out there ministering to those people. She has, she has appeared on WDIV, Fox 2, Detroit, uh, Nightline, and Juju Chain and over 25 radio stations. So we have a powerhouse right here with Amon. Mm -hmm. Sunny and her husbands are pastor of the Road Church, Reach Out and Deliver, 
in Detroit. She has completed a bachelor's program in educational leadership and has a master's degree in organizational management. Without further ado, I just want to officially welcome and introduce you to none other than Sunny Day. Welcome, Sunny. How are you? Hello, I am very well. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Yes, yes. You know, when you think about the winning season and in the second class, I don't look like what I've been through. You know, a lot of times people will smile on their faces. They might have been just gone through something tragic. But I love how you declare this is your winning season. It will always be your winning season. Is that true to say, Sonny? <laughs> of course. Yes, it is. I think God created us to win. Amen. Um, he did not desire or have in his heart for us to lose anything. Um, so if we take on that mindset, I believe we can we can win at whatever we were facing. That's right. I like that mindset. It all starts mm -hmm. right there. So yes. let me just, I want to read a little excerpt from her book, from her story, from her story and let her expound on that. It said the they say the sky is the limit but I, I never knew it could be. Everything I saw was not attainable until you said, use what's in your hand. With me, all things are possible. I need you to just have faith and watch what I can do. I never know what I can do if I believed in you. I know you Okay, I ask you to put your phones on mute. 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 Thank you. Appreciate that. Because we are recording this as well. I'm sorry, Sunny. Go ahead. Did I, are you on mute? Unmute yourself there, Sunny. Yeah, I muted everybody. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, the, the lyrics that you read, those were lyrics from a song I wrote um, entitled, I Never Knew. And, um, and I wrote it, it might be over, it might be 10 years old, actually, the actual song. Mm -hmm. But that was a conversation that um, God was having with me and I was having with God. And um, the, to say the sky is the limit, I never knew that I could get it. A lot of times we don't know what's obtainable um, because we don't see it and we are not in proximity of it. So we tend to only aspire for the things that we can see. And so that's kind of what the lyrics were. And then um, God would tell me that, well, use what's in your hand, just as he told Moses to use what was in his hand. Um, to part the Red Sea. So God said, use what's in your hand and watch what I can do. And so that was pen and paper, uh, being able to write music um, as, as well as be a part of this anthology and write. Um, that's what he told me to use. Use what you got. Use what's in your hand. And everybody has something different. But God wants us to use whatever he's given us. And he's given us all a gift. And it's up to us to take that gift and use it for his glory and watch what he'll do with it. Wow, that's powerful. Because we may not can say what can happen to us, but how we respond to it, right? We'll get yes. the mindset and the attitude, like, God, if you brought me through it to it, I can get through mm -hmm. it, right? <laughs> and we yes. have to be consistent about that. There's one other thing I want to read from your chapter, if you don't mind. You said, God decides the purpose of a thing or purpose, then creates it. It doesn't matter if we believe or understand the purpose, what God wants will happen. Now that's powerful right there. <laughs> yes. On that a little bit, Sonny. <laughs> yes. Um, that excerpt is the name of my chapter is uh the journey. Um the journey is the per I can't even think of it. My mind just went blank. The journey was on purpose. The, the journey, journey was on purpose, right. Um, the journey was on purpose. And so Everything that God created, there was purpose for it first um, before it became. And so even with us, mm -hmm. he created us with the purpose was in mind first. And then he created us to carry out that purpose. So regardless, whether, like I said, whether we understand it or know what it could be, all of that, mm -hmm. what he desires for us to do is going to happen. He said, in Isaiah 46, my plan will take place. Yes. It's not an option. I will. 
is not an option. It leaves no room for any other thing such as I think I might, maybe I will, I don't know. Maybe, no, I will says it's going to happen. And that's what he says. My plan will take place. And so every purpose that God gives us is going to happen in your life, my life, um, anyone's life. His purpose is going to prevail over our plans every time. Wow. So true. So true. You've seen that manifest manifest in your life. So we know that God's word is true. You know, mm -hmm. it's powerful. Yes. You know, some people might say, well, you don't know what I've gone through. So you, you can easily say it's your winning season. How would you share some encouragement or uplifting words to someone's thinking? Well, yeah, you know, you don't know what I've gone through. Uh, yeah, that is, that's just talk. You know, how can I have a winning season when I'm in the pits? You know? <laughs> but, well, God can take that mess and make it a message, right? And he can take uh, what you're going through and use that for his glory. So everything, nothing is wasted in our lives when it comes to God, good or bad. He will take whatever that is and he will cause it to work for our good. And so um, if you are in a situation or you're going through something, look at how God can take that and, and change it into something, um, whether it's lemon making lemonades, right? So he can take whatever we're going through and, and transform it if we allow him to. There you go. That's it right there. If we allow him to. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. So any other words of encouragement you want to say to your other um, co-authors, your contributing authors here? Yes. Uh, congratulations to <laughs> all of our fellow authors, Stacy and Crystal and Tony. Um, and D, I don't know if they're on here. Tony or D is on here. Uh, but I do want to celebrate uh, Crystal and Stacy. I'm so proud of them um, for taking on this journey. This is just the beginning. And I'm excited to see what God is about to blow your mind with. Yes, yes, and yes. So true. Uh, do you want to shout out to anybody? I don't know if you got some friends. That... I, I want to shout out. I don't know if anybody is on here. Shout out to um, I see my Williams on here. Shout out to you. And I was supposed to have a guest from San Diego that was going to join. I don't know if she did or not, but um, shout out to you, Miss Thelma, if you are on here. I appreciate you and anyone else that is on here that I do not know. Um, thank you all for jumping on to support um, all of us. So we appreciate you. Yes. And tell people how they can reach out to you. I know the books will be available in a couple of weeks. I mean, it's right around the corner. So mm -hmm. get, get ready, people. You you want to get this book. You want to make yes. sure. So tell yes. me. Um, you want to make sure you get this book. I'm telling you, because it's going to be a number one bestseller. So you want to be able to say, I got a number one bestseller before it even became a bestseller. Yes. I've already pre-ordered my book. So make sure you go uh, pre-order your books from uh, those that you love that are on here and support them. And um, you can find me on any social media platform. Oh, yeah. Sunny Day um, is my name and it is sunnyday.org. Um, is my website that you can um, check me out there. Awesome, awesome. So make sure you connect with her and get the book. She'll autograph it for you. So you want to make sure, even though Father's Day is coming up, men could be uh, blessed by this book. You know, you think, oh, it's all women authors, but men will be blessed abundantly because they know this their winning season as well. So again, I just want to encourage you to reach out to these authors and grab your copy of the book, and they'll thank you'll prompt they'll thank you later, right? <laughs> Sunny, I know you had to go, but if you could stick around, that's great. If not, I, I, you know, I understand you have to go. I want to introduce the next author at this time. And it's, she's just been a dear heart. She's a powerful woman. And that's Crystal Hicks Rogers. She's just cheesing over there. I just love her spirit. <laughs> and I'll tell you, let me tell you a little bit more about this phenomenal woman. Crystal Hicks Rogers was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. She has worked in the field of education for over 20 plus years. She must have been a baby when she started, right? <laughs> <laughs> and she earned her bachelor's degree in elementary education at Eastern Michigan University and her master's degree in curriculum and instruction at the University of Phoenix. She currently works for Southfield Public Schools in Southfield, Michigan. Crystal is a licensed minister and currently operates as a director of ministries at her church, the Road Church 
located in Detroit, Michigan. She is the owner and founder of Where Grace Speaks, LLC, a business uh, created to educate, empower, and encourage mothers uh, over 35. Her business and personal life motto is Grace has no age limit. So with that, I want to officially welcome you, Crystal. How are you, my dear? <laughs> Hello, I am well. How are you? Oh my goodness. Get down. Get down. Get down. Get down. Hello. Oh, honey. I'm gonna mute someone. Okay. No. Sorry about that. We are live and we're recording. So I ask you to mute your phones if you don't mind. Uh, Crystal, I know your book, the name of your chapter. I love this. I mean, I was on pins and needles when I was reading this. <laughs> power of six words and you know when i think about six words there's the six you know that's the that's the number that god created of human beings so that was so powerful so powerful and <laughs> I said, oh she's got to share it. i don't want you to tell everything so they got to get the book okay. but what motivated you to and i'm gonna read a, a little bit uh, uh from your your chapter but what motivated you to declare the power of six words and saying this is your winning season. Um, so if anyone knows me, I've always been like addicted to words and I'm always conscious of what people say and how they say it. And, and I'm always like trying to figure out why did you say that or what you meant or whatever. And so words to me is like powerful. So I always say things like, you know, you're not really sorry for what you said because you meant to say that. You're just sorry that you said it, you know. So um, a lot of times, um, you know, I'm just I'm always a person that's trying to figure out like, what the what does the word mean or whatever it is. And so um, and I was always a person who when someone said something to me, I take it to heart. Right. And so um, and that could be a good or a bad thing. And so I just always cho chose my words really um carefully and I felt like um sometimes you let those words like set root the wrong words in your spirit and then you start believing what the enemy says and whatever you know what what other people say about you and I feel like um sometimes we don't know that we are letting strongholds to hold us down by just the um what you say and what you release and what you allow to enter into your spirit and so um six words is the little bitty six words it was really powerful and so you know i'm just so conscious of um what you say and how you say it and i didn't realize that while i was writing a book i i figured it out i'm like oh my goodness like i couldn't i didn't even realize that it was six words until i was almost finished with the chapter i didn't i didn't name the chapter first and so it, it was interesting because it was like a revelation to me like oh my god like it was a, a, like a um a epiphany at that time like oh my goodness and so it was powerful it was transforming and how the enemy can use something and then God can turn and use the same something and, and make it a blessing. And so what you thought was something that, you know, was defeating or, or something like that, God would say, no, that's not how I purpose that to for your life. And so this the power of six words will tell you, like, you can have something that the enemy thought was going to destroy you. And he can use that same tool. God can use that same tool to bless you in others' lives. And so um, it was interesting that six words changed my life for the bad and then came around and changed it for the good. So it was amazing. It was a journey. <laughs> wow. You know, I think about what the Bible says, you know, out of the, um, the your mouth, out of your tongue, you either speak life or you can speak death. And it's true about how words can have an impact on a person's life. You know, I just want to read one one part of your, uh, and maybe you can elaborate a little more, Crystal, if you don't mind. Okay. God's plan will always come free of sorrow. <laughs> I realize our God is sovereign and his hope is to give us a future and a hope. So if the plan doesn't give you hope and a future, reevaluate quickly to ensure the plan you are following is truly given by God. Oh my, I got that highlighted in my book. <laughs> I mean, that's yes. powerful. That's powerful right there. <laughs> yeah. So um, 
I had to learn the hard way that God's plan doesn't come with sorrow. I I mean, no matter what, the purpose, just like Pastor Day, Pastor Sonny um, just said that um, he wants us to win. And so, um, of course, we're going to go through trouble and and trip, things like that, but it doesn't come with sorrow. And so when you are going through, when we are struggling, know that that is of the enemy. Um, and so even when you are going through, it says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. And so if you can't do that, even, you know, sometimes you are going through, but you should be able to bless the Lord. You should be able to praise God. You should be able to say the joy of the Lord is my strength or whatever. But if you can't do that and that plan is bringing you more hurt, that mm. is not God's will for your life. Um, I just believe that. I believe that God would not want us to be sorrowful and to be depressed and to feel defeated um, and say that this is God because God comes with an abundant living. You know, he wants you to have an abundance of joy and happiness and freedom and and all of that good stuff, even in, even in the midst of trouble and pain. And so if you can't feel that, you have to evaluate quickly. Like, no, this is not God's plan for my life. Um, and sometimes, you know, a lot of times we'll hear um, parents say, you don't you, I don't want you to go through what I went through. And so you know, let, I don't want to be the, I don't want to be the example or the experience of what not to do, you know? And so if you learn quickly what God's plan and purpose and will for your life is, you won't have to go through that. You won't have to go through that. And I feel like a lot of times we, we have life lessons and we'll go back and say, of course, that's the message and all of that. But sometimes God is not leading us to do that. And we feel guilty and we feel attached to, people or things and we're like oh i supposed to know god god's plan does not bring sorrow and so uh it was powerful i had to learn that the hard way because you you're trying to make something work because you know i, I want to make it work i want to make it work and it doesn't matter how hard you work at something if it is not god's will for your life it will not it will not come to pass. You will be um, clawing and scratching <laughs> forever. And you will still say, why am I not getting anywhere? Because it's not God's plan um, and God's will. And so that's that's my prayer now. It's like 20 years later, like, oh, Lord, I, if I would have known this 20 years ago, <laughs> I, I'd be much further. Um, but yeah, I felt like I was hoodwinked and bamboozled. <laughs> <laughs> like this is not my life like no y'all can't tell me that this is what I, you know and so a lot of times um you know when people speak things to you or when you um let those words live in your heart you feel defeated and you take on that character but god's plan doesn't bring sorrow and so yeah it is, it you know, is. we can get that in our, our mind. That's why we got to know God's word, what his word says, you know, so we could be able to say, okay, your word declares, Lord, you know, <laughs> that I'm blessed, you know, going in and coming out and, you know, and this, is, and so, yeah, that's powerful. But sometimes what we go through, it just brings our, builds our character. It makes us the person who, who you are now, just a beautiful woman of God. You really, I mean, first day I met you uh, over at the, uh, um, at the, it was a Bible study, I think. Uh, it we, was a um, women's meeting. We have a women's ministry and you was there. Yeah. It was just like, wow, you know, mm -hmm. what a wonderful, beautiful spirit of a woman of God that you were. So God knows what he's doing. You know, he's not going to put more on us than we can bear, too, you know. He's no, just, it's <laughs> full circle. I'm I like, know. oh, wow. <laughs> Our yeah. God is great. Do you want to give a shout out or to anyone that some of your guests that might be here? I do i see um a few of my co-workers on here i, I don't want to call names but you know who you are i think i see well i guess i will miss williams miss tracy jennings miss lockridge um those are my co-workers southfield public schools woo -woo. i appreciate you guys my sister is on here from san diego so it's a mm. different time zone i know she's at work so i appreciate you uh my friends i've been and so the friends that are, that are on here, they went through this journey with me. And I, it's so funny because I'm going to be honest, a lot that I've written in the, in my chapter, no one knows. So when they read it, they're going to be like, girl. <laughs> and so wow. it was a real journey for me. So um, I, I thank God for my circle. Kashana, Arnisa, Miss Stanley, Karen. I don't want to. And, oh, Miss Jordan's there, Candace. And so, you know, um, I praise God for the people I've been knowing um, these women uh -huh. since um, since 
college and high school. And so um, they have journeyed with me along with my sister, my family. And so um, it, it was a, it was truly a it was a it was something writing because I'm like, I have to share this with the world. And so um, but it's a blessing. I do feel like this is something that I've always wanted to do. And so I, I thank you, um, Dr. Mary, for pushing me and encouraging me and just being that light and saying that you could do it. And I'm like, I don't know, but I did. <laughs> we did it. And so I'm looking forward to uh, what's next and um, and everyone being a part of this journey with us. And so um, it's a blessing because just like Pastor Michelle said, you know, um, yeah, um, my 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 interesting story was not what I wanted it to be, but it truly is a message. It's really created who I am now. And so I thank God for that. And sometimes, you know, you go through it and I'm like, I'm not saying that you don't supposed to have sorrow, but you should not be stuck, you know? And so- um, God's plan is not going to have you stuck in sorrow and stuck in, in somewhere that you can't um, get out. So I appreciate that. I'm so excited. Um, and a lot of these women that is supporting me today have already pre uh, bought their book. And so I'm excited about that. So thank you guys for your support. Um, and all this, I'm so nervous, but you guys are here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, God knew this day was coming, you know? And so sometimes we always tell the authors, your story is about you, but it's not for you. It's for someone else to be encouraged, to be uplifted, to be inspired, to get joy and know that this is their win season as well you know because um as i said earlier you know winning is very subjective what's winning for you may not be winning for me but don't let circumstances or don't let other people dictate what's winning for you because as long as you got breath in your body and you saw a brand new day today somebody didn't wake up today right and so you got you got a winning season because of that. So I'm just so thankful you said yes. And you got more books to use. I don't even think <laughs> one and done. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I'm going to definitely be working on my solo work. And so we shall see. It'll be a part two. It'll be continuation, right? So nice. I wrote, I was like, oh, I'm writing too much. So it was a journey. And so, yeah, I'm excited about what's next. I really know. <laughs> Share with the audience, uh, not only here, but uh, people in the Facebook land, uh, how they can reach out to you, how they can get the book, and, uh, um, and your social media, and they can know how to reach. Oh, sure. Um, you can always reach me um, on my website, whengracespeaks.org, um, and you can pre-order the book from there, or you can reach out on um, Facebook, Crystal Hicks Rogers. Or Crystal Hicks is it, it, either one, and um, on Instagram. So the easiest way is my website um, or Facebook. Facebook be interesting sometimes, but um, nevertheless, um, you could definitely reach out and send me a message, and I would definitely um, be looking forward to you to do that. I will be at the upcoming All Black Book Fair at Eastern Market. Um, it's going to be on June 29th. I think that's a Saturday morning from 11 to 3. So you can check me out there if you want to come buy a book or you want to join us. There'll be other authors there too. So that's a shameless plug. Sorry. Oh, that's great. <laughs> now you've got to let it let people know how valuable they will be blessed by having that book. And also we're going to have our actual live uh, book launch on that Thursday. June the 27th, you should have gotten it. If not, we'll have a meeting afterwards. And it's mm -hmm. going to be in Dearborn at the Dewan Cafe, Coffee Cafe. So it's going to be author spotlight. And you'll hear more from these wonderful authors. And you'll get the chance to, to hear their heart more in details. You can get the book as well. And we can just uh, ask questions and we'll be more intimate environments. So that you'll get more information about that. So again, thank you so much, Crystal. Let's give Crystal. Thank you. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. I want to introduce the next author. And I'm so excited about her because I met her through a friend and we went on the uh, author's uh, retreat cruise last year. Right, Stacy? <laughs> and I yes. just so awesome got a chance to be uh to meet them in more in details get to know her she brought her mother with her on the cruise got a chance to meet her wonderful mother so let me share a little bit more about this phenomenal woman stacy smith was born in kingston new new york she has lived in pennsylvania uh, excuse me in pasadena california 
East Cleveland, Ohio, and now resides in Detroit, Michigan. Stacy has worked in the field of credit and collections for over 30 years for several businesses, ranging from the food industry to the automotive industry. She has always had a knack for, a knack for business and has been a representative for several direct sales companies, such as Petra Fashions, Tupperware, uh, Leah, Sophia, uh, Jewelry. I love their jewelry. <laughs> I think they are, and now Mary Kay. Married twice and having no birth children of her own, Stacy has an enormous heart. Yes, she does. When it comes to children, AKA the little people. She has participated in many charitable events, raising funds that benefits children with serious medical conditions. So she really has a true compassion heart. Uh, Stacy's mission also is to uplift and be supportive to women in all their business endeavors. She is supported by family, friends, and all her little people. I want to welcome you, Stacy. How are you, my friend? I'm good. How are you? Great, great. Now, I'm her, so glad to be here. I'm so glad you're here. So glad you said yes, yes, yes. Me too. Uh, Stacy ch chapter in the book is called Nine Seconds. And you know, we just repeat now, you know, say one, two, three, you know, that's like nine seconds. So many, so many things can happen in nine seconds, right? But her, her chapter really gives us the detail about something that happened in her life and it was for nine seconds. I'm not gonna tell you because we want you to get the book. But her nine seconds is like a nanosecond as far as part of the rest of your life. So I'm gonna read an excerpt from your, from your chapter, if you don't mind, uh, Stacy, And okay. maybe elaborate a little bit if you don't mind. Okay. Uh, you says here, Father, oh God, how do I do this? Order my steps to do your will so I can help other women who are in situations and need to get out. Father, I also ask you to help me to help other women who just need someone to talk to, whether they are single or married. Allow me to instill in them that it is going to be okay, but only through you will we be fine i highlighted that i love that uh, stacy can you just elaborate a little bit how you your emotion that you were feeling when you wrote that emotionally um i actually cried through the whole time i was writing this um if, if you don't know i'm if you don't know i'm a big cry baby <laughs> i am a very big cry baby um i have a heart for for people that go through stuff. Um, I've been through some things and when somebody else tells me that they're going through something, it hurts to know that somebody else is going through something and you right then and there can't help them. Mm -hmm. um, but all you can do is talk to them and try and make them feel better and let them know that it is gonna be okay. Um, this one, if I might speak on it, um, this one particular time, um, the lady who I was speaking with, she was going through some things and I could I could actually agree with her because I was going through the same thing or had gone through the same thing as well. And it just, she just needed somebody to talk to, somebody to lift, actually lift her up and, you know, let her know that it was gonna be okay um she was going to be okay the situation was going to be okay she just needed to listen to the right words the right people the right voice and to know that you know all is going to be well um that's powerful uh, yeah it is it's very powerful because people are really hurting now. I mean, we just came out of the pandemic with isolation and everything. And so a lot of people just need some somebody to talk to or to be kind to people, you know? Mm -hmm. Because it's easy to, you know, I ain't got time, you know, yes, you know, get over it, you know. But you don't know the depth of what being kind or just listening to someone can help that person through that, you know? Because if it wasn't for the grace of God, that could be us, you know? What right. I mean? situations and and even though it's similar it's something different about your own personal struggle you know what i mean mm -hmm. 
similar situation, but it's similar. It's like, wow, Lord, you haven't left me. You haven't forgotten me, have you, Lord? You know? Right. So, and yes. you have such a passionate heart. Uh, so ever since I met you, I mean, yeah. you're cry, baby. Yeah. I, you know, but, you know, it's just, that's how you are. God made you like that, you know? And so you're very... Um, connected to people, trying to reach out to people, try to help people. And that is a, that's almost a, a, a lost art now, you know? So I, I commend you for that and keep that sweet spirit that you have because people need that. If it's nothing but a listening ear or, or a shoulder to cry on or some uplifting, encouraging words, you know, and mm -hmm. so I can use you mightily that with the little people and the big people, right? <laughs> it's the little people for me. <laughs> the little people, even though some of them are, are, are now grown, it's the little people. Yeah, because mm -hmm. you know, a lot of us, even though we may be the big people, we got a little, um, you know, the Bible said, unless we think like a child, you know, be childlike uh, attitude or, or mindset, you know, could we not expect anything from the Lord. So sometimes even though we big and think we all grown, you know, got the big girl panties on and all of that. Sometimes we need to also know that, you know, inside is that little girl or that little boy that still needs that love or that touch or that tenderness, if you will, that you always offer to people. I mean, you, you that's just who you are, you know. So that nine seconds, I tell you, you know, uh, <laughs> we won't share with the audience, but you need to read her chapter. You might be, like she said, she I was crying while she was writing. We're going to be crying while we're reading it, right? But then at the end, we know victory is always at the end because uh, your winning season, you know, you, you could declare it even when you're going through struggles. You can declare, I'm still winning. Yes, yes. And we're helping everybody else to win too that we touch and love. That's right. Because when we help someone else, we're really helping ourselves, you know. Most definitely. Uh, my mind off of my issues and my problems. I'm talking to you, helping you, giving you some words of encouragement. It's helping, you know, we're helping one another, you know. <laughs> right, right, right. It's all about lifting up, um, lifting that next woman up um, to to get out of whatever it is that they're going through. You know, letting them know it's going to be okay. Yeah. It's just a, your test is a testimony. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yes. In fact, uh, my pastor, my pastor just talked about this is only a test, you know. <laughs> so right. so uh, we'll cut, get on the other side and say, wow, God, thank you for bringing me through that. Nine seconds and all, right? <laughs> Nine seconds and all. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. And then, you know, it, it builds our character when we go through some things. And like I said earlier, uh, how the winning season, you know, your winning season may be different from mine. And, and you know, again, you know, we all got, it's very subjective, right? Mm -hmm. so when we look at it, you know, we, we win. If you get to the end of the Bible, it says we, we all win, you know. But going right. through, you know, I look at Joseph who had to go from the pit to the palace, but he had to go through to get there, you know. And so we must as well go through some things to, to build our character, to make us more like Christ, and so that we can always, you know, share our story so that someone else could be blessed by it. Do you want to give any encouraging words, uh, Stacy, as people said, girl, you just don't know what I've been through. You know, how can I say it's winning? You know, <laughs> um, give people people the listening ear that's needed. Um, not you can't listen to everybody. <laughs> Excuse my expression. You know, no, I know. you're right. <laughs> not, you you're cannot right. listen to everybody because right. everybody doesn't have that same heart. Mm -hmm. But, um. Pick and choose who you're listening to. But at the same token, there's a special voice that you also should hear. And that's the word of God. And whether he, he's screaming at you or listening or, you know, in that soft whisper in your ear, listen to it. Because not everybody has that word for you. I hear you. That's so true. Not everybody has that word. I think what Crystal was just saying about those uh the six powerful words and then, you know, the nine seconds, you know, that that means so much, you know, we can just get get into our spirit that God has a plan for us. You know, Jeremiah 29 declares, I have a plan for you and that it's, it's good, you know, it's gonna, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean everything's gonna be good as you get to the good, you know what I mean? But if mm -hmm. you just hold on and know um, 
I tell you, you have to hold your breath nine seconds or whatever, you know, and know that those six words, you maybe just repeat some, some from God to be able to, to you know, get you through that. Right. But how can people reach out to you? It's still about getting a book, getting an autograph. Um, I'm on Facebook. Um, you can look me up on Facebook by typing in Stacy Smith. Another name is going to pop up, but if you type in Stacy Smith, you'll reach me. Um, and then I am also on um, Instagram and um, TikTok just recently, but what is that? <laughs> um that's it and then i'm i have a, a website that's up and coming so that's under construction so good i appreciate you thank you so much was nice thank you mary thank you dr mary i appreciate you uh, and i know our other author tony um we want to see your face love if we can <laughs> Where is uh, where is Tony? Okay, I'm right here, and I was gonna say that I'm trying to get it together <laughs> <laughs> on this end over here. I have the video going. Um, I'm not sure. Can you see me? I can see you. Yeah, we see your beautiful face. Yes, yes. Tony. Awesome, awesome. I'm trying to make sure it's positioned right and everything. Right, right. I hear you. Let me just share a little bit about this phenomenal woman. Tony and I go way back. I mean, she's a woman um, after God's own heart. Truly, she loves the Lord. Uh, she's already written two books prior to this. Just a woman that you can just fall in love with. You know, you, you, it's like that Kendrick spirit, right? So she is truly a woman after God's own heart, just as David was. She work, She walks to the beat of purpose. I like that. If you know your purpose, you can walk to the beat of your purpose, right? A lover of love, a founder, creator, and developer. She is personally, uh, purposely driven. Um, that's, that's what motivates her is her purpose. That's why she is motivated by that. Um, she's also, her platform includes being a motivational speaker as well as an author of two other books that she wrote. Uh, the Sugar Bear Clubs is self-published through her publishing company, Creative Thoughts and Transparencies. Walking with God in Spirit and Flesh is published by Trilogy uh, Publishing, which is TBN. But as a businesswoman, you know, God's given us many gifts. And as a businesswoman, Tony has established multiple businesses and plans to establish a nonprofit that will be geared towards changing lives. Tony holds a master's degree in public administration and is currently um, an industrial and uh, organizational psychology PhD candidate. So I can see that right now, Dr. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> Mother of three, mother, uh, three daughters and granddaughter of six. Tony believes you must live life every day with intentionality and believe you have the greater anointing still, GAS. And that is her chapter title, Greater, the Greater Anointing Still. Tony, welcome. So glad to have you today, my sister. <laughs> uh, thank you, Dr. Mary. I am so glad to be here and with the other authors, co-authors of this awesome book that will be a number one bestseller. So I'm going to say kudos to everyone up front for making it happen. So what was your challenge as you was writing this, uh, saying this is your winning season, you don't look like what you've been through? You know, sometimes we smile and we go to work, we're performing excellent in every area, but people just don't know the behind the scenes, you know. You exactly. Just a little bit, because I want them to get that book from you and autograph it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I would say some of the challenges, of course, that came from preparing to write this book was related to which vessel or silo to pull out the many things that God has done, because he's been a miracle worker since I've known him. And the seasons that I've gone through, it was hard to say, which one do you put up first? Because it's been so many. And I think that the book itself this is my winning season I don't look like what I've been through Come on now. I could have taken that on so many different levels yeah. and so as I've mentioned I began to to write and you know how you tear the pages back and you throw it away 
right. start again and you throw it away. It's like, I'm, you know, I have a brain freeze. It's a fog right now. But like I mentioned, I woke up one day and gas just dropped in my spirit. And I laid in bed thinking, Lord, what? I said, oh, my gosh, you on to something. And I just began to write. And um, greater anointing still. Yes. About that anointing, you know, I, I don't know how to even describe it. You know, it's something that you have to experience. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, talk about you have to go through it, you know, and our God's giving you a plenty of gas. A great yes. Gas. <laughs> My tank is full. Right. I love that. I love it. My tank is full. I'm going to read a little excerpt that you had here. It said, read until you are full and write until you are empty people will see his glory through your story. Oh my God, I love that. I got that highlighted. <laughs> amen, amen. Found on that a little bit more, tell me. I'm you know, I, I guess I, when I think of that quote, mm -hmm. my personal quote or mantra, it's just like, one, it's something in all of us. And we gain our knowledge and experience through reading, whether it be God's word, or other material that is out there. And that empowers our spirit to be able to know how to navigate. And we are to take those lessons and we begin to write them. And you just continue to write until you're empty, you know, and that's what my plan is. You know, I don't know exactly where I'll be five years, 10 years from now. I know I'll be retired, Amen. but <laughs> what, what I want to do in that is to write. I want to write my heart until it's empty in terms of leaving the wisdom. Mm -hmm. And I believe one of my sisters said earlier, we, you know, we, we go through things and we don't realize that God is using those things for our good. But now I can see the greater anointing still through the experiences that I've had. Yes, yes that's powerful. And like I always tell all the authors, your story is truly about you, but it's not for, it's not for you. Someone in Cairo, Egypt is for someone in Augusta, Georgia. <laughs> Why? Because when we share our story and speak our truth, mm -hmm. that uh, God's going to get the glory out of that. And someone else Amen. will be satisfied by it, you know? So that mm -hmm. we always say, oh, I don't want to share that part. I don't want to tell that part, right? Six powerful words, you know? But if you just release it and allow God to use it for his glory, people will say, oh, I needed to hear that. I need, mm -hmm. that. I need to understand that I wasn't the only one going through that. Isn't that Exactly. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, so um, do you think that the winning season, I, I know earlier I had said, uh, you know, it's winning just means it's very subjective because what you, what, what you might call winning may not be my winning, you know, like today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ice cream. That was I was winning today, y'all. Okay, tomorrow I go to the Y and work it off. Okay, <laughs> but in the meanwhile, you know we have a moment of winning. It yes, us give you the live in that moment of that. You know, because sometimes you think all I'm gonna see is doom and gloom. No, no. You know, a death of a loved one. You know, I'm preparing our family's preparing to say so long to a family member, but we're still winning because we know she loved the Lord. So absent from the Amen. body. So, you know, even incidents in our lives doesn't have to be gloom and doom. It could be, God, I'm winning. I got the victory. Can you attest to that, Tony? Amen. Absolutely. Like I said, there's been so many times in my life where I have seen the hand of God move. And even though I didn't realize it at that time, because often it wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't something that I expected to see. And then when you go through it and you look back, you say, my God. You were with me all along. How could I have even doubted you? Because now I see, and I believe Sister Crystal said it, it always comes together. Mm -hmm. No matter what, it comes together. And I take joy in that. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing to see how God moves. And we always say, you know, I'm not deserving. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you, God, for your mercy. But when you think about the journey that each of us have had to contribute to this book, because, of course, I've read some of the excerpts from the stories of my other sisters here. And mm -hmm. it's, it's a blessing. 
It's an absolute blessing. And I'm looking forward to the publication to have it in hand and yeah. to read the stories. Because when I say they bless me, just reading what I've mm -hmm. read of each of them and mm -hmm. had some tears trinkling down. It's like, oh, I know, I know right? Oh. I know. Oh. Six words and six se seconds. Mm -hmm. That was all powerful. <laughs> yes, yes. And that's the beauty of the sisterhood. You know, I, I mm -hmm. just cannot say, Father God, I'm just glad I was obedient because there's a sisterhood. We got some people that have been in the other anthology. I see my dear friend uh, and buddy uh, Claudette, and maybe she might want to speak about her experience, even though back then it was in the heart of uh, the pandemic, so we didn't have it. But I'm, I'm, I could see having a grand, uh, grand of all of all the previous mm -hmm. just to, you know, to give God the honor and to share your story. You know, absolutely. I didn't mean to put you on the spot, my friend, Claudette. <laughs> Can you unmute? Are, are you there, Claudette? Yeah, I'm just the second one up. Yeah, I'm here. I was getting to a quiet spot. I was okay. sitting in the, room, in the TV, so it's okay. You can put me on the spot. I'm <laughs> I love you. <laughs> but, um, no, I just had the experience of... Um, Participating in the Finish Strong anthology first with one. Dr. Mir, first. the first one. Yes. And it was great and it was God's timing for me. And when Sister Mary, Dr. Mary, Sister Mary, uh, approached me, I knew it was God um, because of just all that had gone on, a breast cancer survivor, and um, just that experience and being able to write about it and trusting God's process was just a blessing for me and it encouraged me and um, in the process, <laughs> believe it or not, of writing my own book. Right. So uh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> just pray that that fire gives in me so I can finish it. <laughs> but um, just grateful to be able to, to know Dr. Mary and to work with some of the other authors and just be in fellowship with her. So God bless you ladies in this book, uh, as far as the winning season. Amen. Thank you, my sister. I God bless you. Thank you so much. The people together. He knows how to connect people. You know, if I was to pick friends, mm -hmm. it's like, uh, nope, that's not, but when God puts us together, you know, I, I just thank God for that. I really do. I, I know, um, Apostle Joy, a dear friend of mine, and uh, she's just did her solo book. Uh, I didn't mean to put you on the spot, sis, but if you don't mind sharing um, uh, and sharing the name of your book so that we can all, you know, we got to support one another, learn how to support one another. Because when I'm helping her, I'm, we're helping each other, right? Uh, Apostle Joy, can you hear me? Are you? I can. Hey, sweetie. <laughs> Hi, this is such a beautiful, beautiful experience. I love what I'm hearing. And my book is called Violated in a Sacred Place, but Healed by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so it's about individuals who have gone through a church hurt situation. Mm -hmm. And it goes through why this happens in a sacred place and how we can move forward um, in the Holy Spirit. It also talks about steps and um, the clinical process as well as the spiritual process because I'm a therapist as well. So thank you so much, Dr. Mary, for letting me join in. I appreciate yeah. you. That book is available. Uh, uh, you can get it from her. Reach out. How can they reach out to you, Apostle Joy? <laughs> um, Destined to Overcome. Destined to Overcome is my ministry. And we have about 1,600 people on that page. You can just uh, go on that page and message me or um, on my Facebook page, Joy Pascal, or you can get it from Amazon. So I appreciate um, the plug, Dr. Mary. Yes. Thank yeah. you. I, I got the book. I, I started reading. I had to put it down because I was feeling some of that. I got to get it still autographed from you. But Anointed Woman of God, every Tuesday she has prayer line. Um, so yeah, you, you, you want to connect with the people that's going to build you up and, and give you, you know, what God has intended for you. Right. Amen. Oh, God is good. We're not through yet in two weeks. Uh, we will be doing a live book launch, uh, authors, as you know, it's going to be in Dearborn. Uh, I'll have a meeting prior to that to, you know, come out and 
at the Dewan Coffee Shop in Dearborn, and it's going to be a, a author spotlight. They're going to be sitting there sharing their stories a little more in detail. They'll be autographing their books. They're going to be there to really just give you uh, their their reason why is their winning season. Amen. And don't have people cut off when is your winning season over. You know, you declare that. And what God told you, you know, this is the time for you to really show case and, and give him the glory for what he's doing in our lives. Listen, how many know he's not through yet? You know, we got much, Amen. More, much more work to do for the Lord. We roll up our sleeves and and, and um, use our gifts and our talents that God's given us. We all have ministries within ourselves that God's blessed you to do. And, and walk in that anointing, you like greater anointing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Amen. So, so uh, of the other guests, do anyone else want to speak or share? In fact, do you want to um, shout out to anyone, uh, Tony, to some of your guests? Um, I just want to say, again, it's an awesome experience being a part of the winning season and to all of the co-authors. And of course, Minister Mary, to you, thank you for being the visionary to bring this all together um, and thank everyone who is here, who's participating to get that support and love is, is pretty awesome. So thank you. Yes. Any final <laughs> words, uh, Minister Crystal? <laughs> no, um, just like Tony said, um, I'm just um, blessed to be a part of the journey to be um, amongst um, some amazing women and to experience this level of, um, I'm just, I'm just happy. I'm excited about able to see like, oh my goodness, I did it. We did it. And so, um, just know that God is great and, um, it's our winning season. And that means for everyone. And like you said earlier, um, you don't need to compare or, um, say my winning season look, doesn't look like hers or yours, or, you know, it's all individualized. And so, you're winning because you're breathing. And so your, your worst day, a dead man wants your worst day. So um, Amen. you're breathing, you winning. A dead man wants your worst day. So be grateful um, that you still have an opportunity to win. So powerful, powerful. Yes. Yeah. And so well any last uh, final words you have, Stacy? Can you hear me, Stacy? Okay, there you are. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm thankful for the journey. I'm, I appreciate the uh, invite. I'm glad to be here, Mary, Dr. Mary. Um, and I'm thankful for the support. Um, that you know, that phone call that uh, Dr. Mary. Wow, what? <laughs> what do I do? What do I say? <laughs> speak from your heart. That's right. That's yes. Right. And yes. we, we write it down, we're leaving a legacy for that next generation, for those, those are coming behind us, you know, so they can have a reference point. You know, wow, I had a moment in my life, it was nine seconds. You know, I can say that it's a greater anointing uh, still. I know about six powerful words, what are yours, you know? So mm -hmm. we're leaving a legacy, ladies. I don't think that it's not for naught. You're leaving a legacy and you know that God's going to get the glory out of that. And some people will even be saved through this. I do believe that. I always, that's my mm -hmm. intent. Amen. Amen. So he be lifted up. He'll draw, you know, all men, boy, boy and girl to himself. And so if we continue to do that. His word will be manifested in our lives and others' lives. Amen. So Amen. So, so excited. I tell you, I don't, I don't know if I could sleep tonight, you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm going to listen to the replay and I'll mm -hmm. send it to each of you ladies um, so you can do it on your own uh, platform as well. But God okay. bless you richly and we'll see you in two weeks because we're going to do the live uh, there at, um, at the cafe. You'll get more details, okay? Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Have a good night. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye for now, thank everyone. Have a Bye for now. I like that.